Hello, I'm Weird Al Yankovic, and you're watching Stephanie'sRockShow.com. Chris, I'm Jeremy, from the Devil Wears Prada, and you're on Stephanie'sRockShow.com. We've got the Dillinger Escape Plan, and you're watching a show called Stephanie's Rock Show. You can see her straps, but you know she's clean. Hey, how do you rock and rage at the same time? I don't know. Nobody does. And you're listening to stephaniesrockshow.com. I was constipated for about a week on yeah. the road. And, uh, Traveling now, you know, it's awkward. It was bad. So um, so I was getting desperate. So I, I went to the drugstore and I got this stuff, some kind of bromide thing or whatever. You're supposed to drink the whole thing. And I looked at the pack and it said, like, half an hour to an hour it would work, right? So I took it. Hour, nothing. Two hours, nothing. Three hours, nothing. I had a gig to do. So... Show comes along, nothing. Body so I'm doing the whole show. Get to the last song on the encore. All of a sudden, it's like I gotta go now. <laughs> like right through, and this is in the days of pleather, right? <laughs> yeah. fake leather. I, I wear pleather. So, <laughs> you know, my pants just and you're just stuck. Rip. And I'm stuck, and I'm actually stuck, and I'm bleeding profusely, <laughs> and I'm literally stuck. In During the show, did they stop the show? show? No, 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 no. Ronnie came up and. Had to cut. You're playing, stop playing, bleeding with the bleeding, pleather. Pleather Great. ripped, and the guy had, has to sure. saw. Has to saw. Well, actually, I think he just broke it. Come think of it, just broke the pulse whip to get my flick out. Oh my. Uh, basically, he called me up one day. It was Mike Varney, and said, "Yeah, I got this singer named Phil. You ever heard of UFO?" I said, "Of course I have." <laughs> you know, and uh, well, he's looking to put a new band together. At the time, it was a brand new band. Oh. Yeah, because UFO. For that, it's numbered and yeah, they, they uh, got. Was this a reunion tour or just a whole new? Oh no, actually, the whole project was really going to be a brand new project. He just needed a guitar player to work with to write songs with. Piano yeah, lesson thing that messed me up. I want to be out. It's playing. probably hard to get chicks playing piano. It is tough because carrying it around, you know, yeah. they're already gone by the time you're ready. <laughs> so. What's your favorite location to do a live show? There's a lot of. Uh, we were played the once in Red Rocks in Colorado. We got a show coming up there soon. And, oh, nice. and it's just an iconic place to play. So looking forward to that. Marilyn Manson was a huge influence on me. Um, definitely, I would say anything from the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're from Canada. When did you cross sure. the border? When did you come over to the States? Uh, I came over to visit um, about six years ago. So I go kind of back and forth, you know. I mean, just huge right now. They need to hear it. Fuck grandmas. There's, it's so weird because we have like lineage packages that we're selling right now. You can get front row VIP passes for your grandmother, your mom, and your and your daughter, or or your, whichever way it works out. And you come backstage, and we can have the sexual lineage. It's awesome. It's a. Do you feel that there's a huge music scene over in Vegas recently, or is it lacking in that department? Well, I noticed that a lot of bands from LA are coming here. And they're playing all these places, you know, uh, they're, they're the cover bands, and then like all the rock stars are putting these cool all, uh, all-star bands together. And I, and I noticed that uh, some of the hotels are geared towards the rock and roll, and you know, trying to compete with the hard rock and stuff like that. So I think there's a there's a really cool scene here actually, and it's a younger, younger crowd. Yeah. And um, I noticed a lot of people who look like us. You know, my first rock band that I really got into was like in sixth grade. I got way into the Who. Oh, so nice. I was like way into The Who from like 6th grade to like ninth grade, 10th grade. It was like The Who and Van Halen with David Lee Roth were like, that's what we listened to. And a little oh, bit of Led God. Zeppelin. And then hip-hop hit in the 80s when I was in high school. And you got really into hip-hop? I got really into hip-hop. <laughs> were you a gangster? Or you I was down? one of the first white wannabe kind of <laughs> hip-hop fans in the You were 80s. the Eminem before you came out. I, was, I had a Gemini mixer. I had We would go to like the Fresh Fest, and I saw like Public Enemy the first time they performed live. And wow. Like, Violence. <laughs> and and baby anal making. sex. <laughs> um, you know what? The best form of birth control is facials. <laughs> I well, love I'm that. Solid, I'm Cody Nut. <laughs> and then on your MySpace, you had something about like hot orgies or something that you described yeah. about me. What was that? It was a cool oh, year. <laughs> that was about tonight. I love it. About tonight with us. Yeah. What was is that describing the music or just? No, yeah, that's the, that's describing our stage shows. We have we don't we don't just play for a bunch of yeah. fans. We have orgies. It's like me and Ace get along really well. Yeah. 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 Let's talk stories. about it. They're just all Let's good. Them. They really have a choice. <laughs> that was it. I mean, our grandfather's a jazz pianist. Our aunt plays violin. 
dad's a harmonica player, mom, your brother and sister. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we yeah. from a very musical family. So you guys seem like you get along really well for brother and sister. Do you guys ever fight or? No. Best friends. We're like best friends. That's amazing. You know, I think uh, for us, audience participation is vital. Yeah. Definitely. And that's, that's what sort of drives us to really, you know, to, to, go for it. Yeah, to go for it. Who were some of your rock inspirations, or who did you look up to, or maybe got you into music when you were growing up? Well, way back, way, way back, was uh, Chuck Berry, was the first uh, real yeah. kind of. And there's something about the sound he had, just. You know, English bands were picking up on it. Uh, bands like the Stones, you know, everybody was, uh, you know, kind of the, um, they, they were all influenced by it. The thing that I really did that, that I toured a lot with was I, I spent about a year and a half in a band called the Tattooed Millionaires touring with them, uh, which was a eye-opening experience <laughs> on, on, a lot, on a lot of levels. Was it fun on the tour bus? With them? Yeah, I mean, crazy? no, we we definitely. I, I think I sold my wild oats in that band. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all good. It's like being able to do something that that we would already be doing anyway for a living is is, is amazing. And um, getting to come out and then see the people that support us, like face. And and of course, everything develops, and um, we just. I I was very fortunate with Brett because we liked each other. I mean. We actually dated and we hung out we and had fun together. We had fun and I experienced things with him that I've never experienced before and he was so supportive of me. Bottles at the screen during the movie <laughs> and he gets a woman in the front with a bottle and we had to stop the movie and cut her whole face open. It was terrible. My mother was there. So oh my god. So the whole face got cut open and we ended up stopping the movie and not showing the rest of the movie because wow. the house came. Fiji took off and then um, yeah, but he had hugged me the next day, I think it was right. You know, like and did you forget job, even though he never saw the whole movie? Yeah, he never. He just. I mean, I'm sure he eventually did because now they think about he's it. He's like my drunk recollection. I think it was full. He died like three months after that. That's what happened. Wow. It's called One Eyed Monster. It's oh, well, I'm like a walking plug. Look at this. It's on Showtime right now. That's what we want. Really, really well. It's about a killer penis, and it actually makes sense. Not See? a killer penis. His well, penis. my penis leaves the body, it grows teeth and kills people. But listen to what happens. I understand this. That, like, um, it's a lot no and Yeah, Amazon yeah, Pennywise. exactly. Um, yeah. Sublime. That's what I wear. <laughs> Actually, it was like Sublime L7, Orange 9 Millimeter, yeah. uh, Us, some other. It was, it was a lot smaller. Back. You guys have a band you're excited to see, Fans Warped Tour 2010 to Um, face to face. <laughs> us. <laughs> we have a new. Sounds really interesting. Tell me what inspired you to write the book and how it came about. Sure. Um, you know, after the last couple of years, all Rock on the Fire was coming out, um, you know, I started thinking, I started kind of reflecting on my life. Oh, so wait, well, this is, is uh, this Mayhem, I think, has like a third of the bands that this tour package does. So it, it is cool because there's so many tour buses and so many different people you get to meet. Yeah. You know, musically, as an artist, as a musician, we know that. It's not, you know, the music isn't just Looks about, but... yeah, like, I can't define our music, but to me, it's just, like, sprinkles on top of a yummy cupcake, you know yeah, what I mean? It's just, your name it's just another, it's just another layer of something good, and it's just, um, it's just, like, you know, it's fun. I love Revolver. We had fun. I got completely wasted. I'm not a big, <laughs> I'm not a big drinker, and I was, like, totally For smashed the at, the, at the awards. Oh, um, civilian yesterday. I'm a normal person. And porn. <laughs> and going out slutty and going out. I don't even think I have. If I was to go for a normal interview, I would not have anything in my wardrobe that would be appropriate <laughs> to, not, would not to go. No. Um, you first meet him and how did it come about to hire you on as a guitarist? Uh, we were doing a benefit for the tsunami uh, survivors and um, Dave Navarro said, oh, we're doing this uh, benefit, would you like to do it? And I was like, well, who's playing? They named a bunch of people, and I, they said Rob Zombie, and I said, well, only if I get to play with Rob Zombie. And so we made it work, and I asked Rob, I said, hey, if you need a guitar player, let me know. And uh, he hired me for, to do OzFest, and he said, well, you know, it's only going to be six weeks, so, you know, don't get comfortable, you know. But now we're going on five years. What was the inspiration for this? <laughs> it's pure, pure evil. No, nah, it was just uh, it was eight years worth of an idea of doing a band together, and uh, it just you know with my my schedule, Joey's schedule, and just 
just wasn't time to do it. And we started talking again, uh, you know, about about a year ago, and it became more of a realistic thing. And we got back together, and just you know, it it worked out great. You know, it's eight years worth of songs, and that's why I think the record's so diverse, and it shows all these different sides of it. So, uh, two thousand was little bouncy balls, and went and tr like through their whole set, we're just bouncing and covering them. Yeah, it was great though. What time do you guys go on and what stage? 6.30 on the main stage. Oh, yeah. So be oh, there. Okay. Are you guys first on the main stage? First. Nice. Yeah. So everyone get ready to check that out. I know there'll be some live footage going on soon. And they That's kind of how it started. And what was your favorite genre of music growing up? Rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Like 80s, 70s? Is there a certain era? Um, well, I was weaned and raised on the roots of rock and roll. Going back to Little Richard and Jerry Lee Lewis and Chuck Berry and Fats Domino, and those are my favorites to this day because if, um, I've uh, done a few songs with Buckethead, uh, a friend of mine who's a like a phenomenal guitarist. We put out a record called Buckethead and Friends with a bunch of different singers and, and different artists, and yeah, so we've done that a number of times. Nice. And when's the release date of the CD? September seventh is when Imperfect Harmonies comes out. Um, did you write all of the songs on the album? Yes. Live concert that you've been to growing up that kind of you saw and you were like, wow, I want to be in music or do something after it. I had a favorite last, uh, the last one we had, we played with Kiss at Grass Pop. Wow. And we got to be Kiss and that was my favorite this month. <laughs> you have a favorite Kiss member? Yeah, I gotta go with Gene, you know, the bass player. Yeah. And, I mean, you have to, you know. That's Record company and stuff. So it brings us often in here. Uh, we also, I think we played more, more than maybe 70 shows off the last album in, in the States. And uh, Vers Collide, uh, released three years ago, was first proper release that we got uh, the possibility to make the get the album out in the st <laughs> it did it was the it, to us that was the that was that we call that the foot of tour because okay, that was the foot the foot of tour because it was five finger death punch and if you try to pronounce there's their um if you try to pronounce fftp you get for the trying to write songs i had no idea what was going to happen I, I knew it was a good song i liked it yeah and then you know it took were you in love at the time um no i was actually it's funny the song is not really a love song it was kind of more of a prayer uh, yeah, I was kind of, I was, uh, I was sort of in a bad place, but it worked. Going on when you do. Thanks, yeah, you did it. The, the key is just to keep a straight face and to not let the people that you're interviewing know that you're making fun of their existence. You're so serious. You you're serious, they just think you're really confused by how stupid they are, and you don't think they're stupid, and then the audience gets it, and then Lampoon hired me to do my own show called The Glebe Show, I did that for a few seasons and sold that to Fox, and, um... When you tell that woman you're just a number, you're not just a number, and then you call her by the number, <laughs> it's like the best F. She didn't you. get it. She did not yeah. get it. How do you not get that? It's a slight tack rock in many ways. Um, so what age did you first start playing bass? Eleven. Eleven. Mm -hmm. And what made you start? Did you start with guitar? Let me take that back. No, I started playing guitar at around ten and a half, eleven, and then I switched to bass because nobody else wanted to do it. So. Rocking it with SMN News. Uh, Paul Gilbert's my favorite guitar player. I just have a lot of influence from him and as far as my lead work and everything. Jake, if you have to pick um, Jimi Hendrix or Jeff Beck, who do you like better? Uh, Jeff Beck. Yeah. yeah. Is there a reason? I just never really was into Jimi Hendrix yeah. at all. You know, it was like just recently, this is another the, something that was kind of validating for me as a, as a rock singer. I got a call from Carlos Santana's management. And they asked me to come and sing on his new record. Wow. Yeah, and it's I like see. a, it's a, it's a covers record. So he wanted me to sing on uh, Deep Purple's "Smoke on the Water." And I was, yeah. And we went to Interscope, and they wouldn't let me leave the building. They I were like, I that Carson Daly had so much to do with you guys' hit. That's amazing. Carson Daly is totally key to our our success. Yeah. I mean, he was like the fifth Beatle. You know. And that's the right way to, to sign a band. You know. Definitely see in person and dig it. Um, so whose idea was it to do the CeeLo Green's Fuck You? I love it. No, we, we, were, we were doing this, like, you know, this cover album with, like, mostly classic rock songs, you know, and uh, another label, like, asked us, like, what about Top 40? And we're like, yeah, that sounds cool. So we just checked the charts and whatever. I think it was Jesse that they knew about the song more than anyone. And feeling and attitude that went into the writing and just the recording process. It was very, very bad time. So I think yeah. I think the record kind of showed what we were I going through. I feel like through. dark times create the best records, though. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it comes absolutely. out on top and you have a lot to do, like work with. Oh, definitely. That's it. Yeah. Change everything, you know? 
Definitely. You want to put your own twist on it and leave it that way. Yeah. That's neat. And so and you also have a beautiful and talented daughter, Jessie Money, um, and she sings with you on stage, Take Me Home Tonight. How did this start and come about? Well, she's been singing on stage with me ever since she was like three years, four years old, with little white shoes on with bells in them. Okay. Uh, well, I got off my label, so now, I, now I'm on a new label and I can put it up. So I'm going to put an EP out. Uh, really soon, like we 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 shot two videos in the last few weeks, and we're gonna shoot three more, and then uh, the EP will come out the end of the year, and then a new record at the beginning of the year. Hey, you know, coming to the world, right? Children are conceived at Weird Al concerts. You heard it first. That actually is not. Uh, it is true. It's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're just we're gonna pretend. How did Weird Al W Bermuda? How did that name come along? Well, he you know he was Weird Al. Weird Al's in quotes. And uh, he thought uh, a, a great time playing in Austin because this is where we started. So uh, anytime we get the chance to come back home and play, it's, it's always a good show. The first one was, what um, advice would you give to the younger generation starting out in music since you have a lot of experience? <sighs> wow, to a generation I'm speaking. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I just think it's got, you got to be make, make sure that you're really into getting into this because it's not as easy I suppose as it looks but if it's in your heart and it's in your gut and you can't shake free of it I, I mean I was in I was in my senior year in college when I finally decided you know none of this is going to cut it I got inspiration for the record happened on Lake Travis I don't I write songs all the time so the idea was uh, it'd be cool to have a record that would fit in this environment so when it, he wanted it before she started drinking. What so jury is going to convict this band of rape? Too huh? sexy, too hot. I love it. Too sexy, no judge. So do you have a favorite? We wake up early and do yoga and eat lots of vegetables. I like it. How, how did you guys meet each other? I feel like it's really rare that all collective talented six people could come together and rock out on stage like that. We actually answered Craigslist ads for us. A... But you just are getting more involved. You know, there's a scripture that says raise your children in the ways of the Lord, and even if they fall off, they will always return, you know? And I didn't know that until I read it, and I went, huh, that kind of happened to me, you know? And, and Cool, you know, three albums in a row, top 30, moving up, especially in, in a moment where the music business is kind of fucked up in terms of sales. Let's just work off that. It's, we're not reinventing the wheel by any means, but uh, <laughs> we, whatever we come out with, we make sure that it's strong and uh, it's uh, listenable and... Uh, well, what we think people want to hear and not what we want to hear ourselves. So. Awesome. In the Keeper's Chamber, what else are you guys up to right now besides slaying humans? New album come out August 30th. Ooh. We're really glad to be here. Awesome. And so from, from the folks at home that can't be backstage right now, we're on the tour bus. It's super awesome right now if you're on audio. Um, what are we missing? What's going on backstage? Are these guys going to sleep at 10 p.m. or is there still wildness going on? Uh, there's wildness going on, but maybe not as much that it used to be from those guys. So. Doing your first full-length album. Um, do you guys know when that'll be out? Or yeah, It'll be out before summer because we are going on a big summer tour as well, which we can't talk about yet, but you can make speculations and guesses and all that kind of stuff if you want. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> so again, we bring uh, Jakey Lee back from, uh, from the dead, so to speak. We had, no one's really heard from Jakey. Uh, in about 20 years living under a rock yeah living in a trailer in vegas and disillusioned by the Dream business come true yeah yeah your advice to artists just starting out how do you stay in the game well i think the, the most important thing is to is to really care about your craft um practice as much as you possibly can um and do good in school yeah.